About one quarter of the universe's visible mass is helium. This fact alone is one of the most spectacular pieces of evidence that our universe began with a bang 13.8 billion years ago. Asterisk. And not only does this prediction verify the Big Bang, it also implies that there are three types or species of neutrinos, which seems completely unrelated. Let me explain. About a microsecond after the Big Bang, the universe was cold enough that protons and neutrons wouldn't melt. So being the lightest baryons, these particles started to condense out of the soup in abundance. And because they don't have exactly the same mass, the neutron is slightly heavier, the equilibrium state has slightly more protons than neutrons, roughly because it's easier for neutrons to turn into protons than vice versa. But as the universe expands and cools, the rate of conversion changes, meaning that the equilibrium distribution changes. Essentially, protons only efficiently turn into neutrons above a certain temperature, and the reverse reaction can happen at a slightly lower temperature. But once the universe cools below that slightly lower temperature, the neutron and proton abundances are frozen out. They don't change anymore. So the longer the universe stays in that in-between temperature range, the lower the neutron abundance at the end of the whole process. But of course, the amount of time that the universe stayed in that temperature range depends on the rate at which the universe was expanding. And as a consequence of general relativity, we know that if there are more neutrino species, the universe would have expanded faster. If there were fewer, slower. And that means that the abundance of neutrons after freeze-out critically depends on the number of neutrino species. Now all of this can be calculated with fairly straightforward thermodynamic considerations and just a sprinkling of phenomenological quantum field theory. So now the question is, what information do we need to feed this calculation to make an explicit prediction? Well, we know from independent particle physics experiments that there are three species of neutrinos. Furthermore, we need to know the rate at which neutrons decay into protons. It's about 15 minutes. Some other details, like the mass of the proton, the neutron, and the helium nucleus are also needed, but these are also independently measurable. So what do we end up predicting? Well, after almost exactly one second, the protons and neutrons freeze out, leaving about six protons for every neutron. However, it's still too hot for helium to form, and so some of the neutrons end up decaying into protons as the universe continues to cool. By the time helium-4 can form, around 200 seconds after the Big Bang, there were about seven protons for every neutron. Almost all of the surviving neutrons then joined in pairs with protons to form helium-4. From that ratio of 7 to 1, we can do some arithmetic. If there were a total of 10,000 protons and neutrons, that would mean that there were 1,250 neutrons, which could form 625 helium nuclei by using up 1,250 protons. That leaves 7,500 protons and 625 helium nuclei, meaning helium makes up 25% of the baryonic matter by weight. And by observing the universe around us, we can check how much helium there is. And we find that of the baryonic matter in the universe, about 24% of it is helium by weight, which is pretty incredible if you ask me.